Our dear Heavenly Father, we come thanking you for today. We want to praise you for your care and for your guiding. We praise you for the Word and for the means of being able to join together. We pray for your help today that equipment will work and that we will be able to share the word and that each will be able to hear and understand. We thank you for your blessings and we pray, Father, that as we are facing a new year in a few days, that our life's record will be that which you would approve of. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> well, a new year is approaching very, very rapidly. For in a few days, we will see the events of a year that, as a youth, everyone talked about as mere science fiction. What has been the history of this last year, of 2023? What is the burden of records? In other words, the record books of heaven. What has been written there that is almost about to pass into eternity? The admonition of the apostle comes down to the lines to every one of us. Let's go to our Bibles. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. And it says, examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. Prove, that word means test, prove your own selves. Now we're going to stop right there with that verse. Examine your own, or you, yourselves. Your own selves, in other words. Examine yourselves. Not your brother, not your sister, not somebody else in church, not a family member. Examine yourselves. Prove or test your own selves. And this is the work that we should be doing, especially as we see another year of life, another year of this earth's history, that's going to very soon be passing away. God forbid that we should be allowing another year to pass by while we are engrossed in so heavy the everyday tasks of life that we fail to be seeking our Savior, that we're not giving the right amount of time to critical examination. As we stand on the threshold of a new year, there is need of impartial examination of our hearts to dispel the pleasing illusions of self-love. Self-love. You see, that's the heart of the whole sin issue, is self-love. Looking at ourselves and saying, well, I'm not so bad or comparing ourselves among ourselves and th 
thinking that we're doing pretty good. So I want to go to the Review and Herald articles. Um, Review and Hard uh, Review and Herald, um, November 19, 1908, and this is paragraph 6, uh, Review and Herald, November 19, 1908, paragraph 6. Satan is now more earnestly engaged in playing the game of life for souls than at any, as pre any previous time. And unless we are constantly on our guard, he will establish in our hearts pride, love of self, love of the world, and many other evil traits. He will also use every possible device to unsettle our faith in God and in the truths of his word. If we have not a deep experience in the things of God, if we have not a thorough knowledge of his word, if, no, we, let me back up just a bit there, I stumbled. If we have not a thorough knowledge of his word, we shall be beguiled to our ruin by the airs and sophistries of the enemy. False doctrines will sap the foundation of many because they have not learned to discern truth from error. Our only safeguard against the wiles of Satan is to study the scriptures diligently. Excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Our only safeguard against the wiles of Satan is to study the scriptures diligently to have an intelligent understanding of the reasons of our faith, and faithfully to perform every known duty. The indulgence of one known sin will cause weakness and darkness, and subject us to fierce temptations. False doctrines we just read. False doctrines will sap the foundations of many because they have not learned to discern truth from error. Doctrines of devils is what we are battling against as a professed people. Winds of doctrines will be blowing. And the people of God are being taken out. I wonder I wasn't finding the right page there. I want this book, Signs of the Times. Signs of the Times, January 4. Signs of the Times, January 4, 1883. And I'm going to read several different paragraphs here. I'm going to start right in paragraph 1. It says, What has been the history of the year that with its burden of results has now passed into eternity? Well, ours isn't quite. This was written January 4. But the year is almost to its end. The admonition of the apostle comes down the lines to every one of us. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Skipping to paragraph 2. Christian brethren, as Christ's ambassador, I treat you to inquire into the character of your thoughts, tempers, purposes, words, and works during the past year. What has been the nature of your experience? Compare the records of your religious life with the Bible standard and pass judgment upon yourselves. Have the fruits of righteousness testified that you are in the faith or have the fruits that you have borne witnessed against you? 
This is a subject worthy of earnest, careful thought. Be thorough and impartial in your examination of the past year's record. Do you see the defects in your character? And you are compelled to admit that you have made no decided advance in overcoming these unholy traits. Remember that if not overcome, these will surely separate you from the presence of a pure, holy, sin-hating God and close the doors of the heavenly mansions against you. The church militant, I'm skipping down, the church militant is not the church triumphant, and the earth is not heaven. The church is composed of erring, imperfect men and women who are but learners in the school of Christ to be trained, disciplined, educated for this life, for the future immortal life, no one of us can, in our own strength, represent the character of Christ. But if Jesus lives in the heart, the Spirit dwelling in him will be revealed in us. All our lack will be supplied. Who will seek at the beginning of this new year to obtain a new genuine experience in the things of God? Make your wrongs right as far as possible. Confess your errors and sins one to another. Let all bitterness and wrath and malice be put away. Let patience, long-suffering, kindness, and love become a part of your very being. Then, whatsoever things are pure and lovely and of good report will mature in your experience. Another year with its spotless record is before us. What shall be, what shall that record be? As if all realized as they should the shortness of time, the backsliding of our people, the perils which beset our pathway, the deceptions of Satan, and his victories over unguarded souls, there would be no feasting, no mirthful gatherings to pay honor to the, to the human, but there would be a great humbling of heart before God and earnest prayer for pardoning and sanctifying grace. And skipping down again, as we stand on the threshold of a new year, there is need of impartial examination of our hearts to dispel the the pleasing illusions of self-love. Our condition is helpless and hopeless unless infinite mercy is granted us daily and pardon is written against our names in the heavenly records. Self-love has been the battle that we, through many, many years, have all been striving to overcome. Self-love. <laughs> Philippians chapter 3, verses 13. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 to 15 says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this to you. In other words, we're not there yet. We haven't obtained, but we have counsel to forget the things of our past, our failures, our mistakes, our sins. 
learn by those things, but go forward, not wallowing in our miry mess. But let us go forward. Let us be perfect through Christ. Monday, this coming Monday, will be Christmas. And as the world gives to each other, let us think on how that quote, first Christmas, transpired. And I say quote because it really wasn't. Christmas didn't come about until later. But the wise men came bringing gifts to Jesus. Not to each other, not to the shepherds, but to Jesus. So why is it that man has changed the order of things and directed worship or self-worship? of giving gifts to each other. Why are the gifts given to friends instead of to him who has made so great a sacrifice for us? All of the gifts given should flow in another channel. And that is where they can be used for the salvation of other men, women, and children. The new year is but a few days further away. Shall not the gifts be turned to better account than what they have in the days gone by? Shall not confession be made to our King who is willing and able to cleanse us from all sin? Christ became poor for our sakes. He came to this earth to give us a chance so that we could have the opportunity to be reunited. We know not what this new year will bring. But as we go into this new year with numerous active wharves, some of which are spoken of in prophecy. How is our record going to stand? What if those wars come to the country where we live? Wherever that may be. And all things are changed as we currently see it. Right now, we live in relative peace. But what is it going to be like very soon? The last great day is at hand. And we're soon being judged according to what is done. Christ will say, as was spoken in Matthew Chapter 25, the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 25 and starting in verse 42. For I was a hungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty. And ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. 
Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee an hungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then Christ is going to say, verse 45, Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily, I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And again, Christ will say in verse 41, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. You see, we are facing a huge battle. And the battle is over each one of us. And the choices that we make. I don't think anyone who has ever professed to be a Christian would want to hear those words depart from me. And yet, the majority think they're just fine. And the Bible says, few there be that find it. Few. It's time, instead of us being working towards self-pleasing, we need to be thinking of what we can do for our Savior. Review and Herald, December 11. Review and Herald, December 11, 1879, and paragraph 2. It says, thousands of dollars will be worse than thrown away upon the coming Christmas and New Year's in needless indulgences. But, if, but it is our privilege to depart from the customs and practices of this degenerate age. And instead of expending means merely for the gratification of appetite, or for needless ornaments or articles of clothing, we may make the coming holidays an occasion in which to honor and glorify God. We advise all our brethren and sisters to make a decided reform in regard to these fest festival days. Those who appreciate the gift of God's dear Son to save them from ruin now have a favorable opportunity to, to give tangible proofs of their gratitude by rendering to God their thank offerings. Going down to the next paragraph. Let us seek to faithfully represent Christ on the coming festival days by imitating his example as he went about doing good. It is impossible to enjoy the approbation of God while living for self. As Christians who profess a living faith in the near coming of the Son of Man, keeping all of God's commandments, let us make earnest efforts to draw near to God through Jesus Christ and make a covenant with Him by sacrifice. In our principles of action, we must be elevated above the customs and fashions of the world. Christ came to our world to elevate the minds of men to the divine level and to bring them into sympathy with the mind of God. As every blessing we enjoy is brought to us through the condescension, humiliation, and sacrifice of Jesus Christ, we should render to him our best gifts. Above all, not withholding ourselves. 
the infinite sacrifice which Christ has made to free us from the guilt and woe of sin should work in every heart a spirit of gratitude and self-denial which is not manifested by the word of by the world god's gift of christ to man filled all heaven with amazement and inspired at his birth the angelic song glory to god in the highest and on earth peace good will toward men that's Luke 2 4 going down to paragraph 7 there are many who have not books and publications upon present truth here is a large field where money can safely be safely invested there are large numbers of little ones who should be supplied with reading how many books out there when I went through that and saw that I said okay we only have a couple of books that are really suited for children so I've already gone searching and I have at least at this point one more that will be striving to make available something that was actually recommended a little further on here. So as we um, as we see the events transpiring, as we are about to begin a new year, let's begin it that new year, that is, with a clean record. A clean record. Washed clean from all sin and stain. That means that we may have some work to do. There may be those that we need to go and apologize to for things that we have done. There may be those that we need to, those sins in our lives that need to be forsaken. In other words, now is a chance. You know, often the new year brings around brings about the um, desire to make New Year's resolutions. Of course, sad to say, most of those resolutions are as quickly forgotten as is our Lord and Savior. But let's be serious. Let's make a New Year's resolution that we are going to walk closer to our King, our Savior, than we've ever done before. Going to our Bibles, I want to go to the book of Psalms. And Psalms 116, Psalms 116, starting at verse 12. And it says, What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. Now there is a New Year's resolution. I will take of the cup of of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord because I can't do it on my own but Jesus has promised that we can be victorious through his strength that we can become like him review and herald 
January 20. Review and Herald, January 20, 1885. And starting at paragraph 2. January 20, 1885. God has left each one a work to do for himself. Have you been faithful in this work? Have you studied to conform your character in every particular to the law of God? Have you sought to discover and remedy every defect in yourselves that would have a tendency to lead others from the path of strict rectitude? Has your, has your life been so molded by the word and spirit of God as to make you a blessing to all with whom you associate? You are in danger from corruption within and temptation without. There are evil habits and traits of character which are constantly inclining you to selfishness and weakness of principle. During the past year, Satan has been diligent in his efforts to turn you away from beholding yourselves. And many of you have erred in leaving God's own established standard to follow the imperfect one of your own devising. But none need err from the way, for God has given his own beloved Son to be our guide to paradise. We are to copy his pure, spotless, and holy life, and through his grace we may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Many of you, skipping down a little bit, many of you have made great mistakes the last year. And I would have to say, interjecting here, I would have to say that if we are being honest with ourselves, we'd all have to say, yeah, that's me. I would have to say that. But let's go back to our quote. Many of you have made great mistakes the last year. Will you repeat, repeat these mistakes during the year upon which you have just entered? Of course, this was written January 20, so we've not quite entered it, but in a few days. Human judgment is finite, and men in their blind self-will often trust to their own opinion and take a course that cuts directly across the path of God's providence and defeats his ends. You need to examine yourself carefully and see what is the tendency of your course. The Spirit of God is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart, and it will reveal to you your standing and the nature of your work. December, uh, Review and Herald, December 11, 1879. And I forgot to put a page number in my book, so it's going to take me a moment here to... Oh, no, I did that. Oh, that's why I did that. We read that one already. That ought to make it easier. Um... I just had a collection of numerous quotes that we're looking at here on the new year. And I thought it was very appropriate for us at this point. And that's why we're taking time with this. So um, this is Re Review and Herald, December 7, 1886. And for those looking it up, it's paragraph 16. Um, so, Review and Herald, December 7, 1886. It's the last paragraph in the article. 
Have we been forgetful of God's goodness in the past? Have we now a precious opportunity to redeem these neglects? Let us upon the coming Christmas and New Year's not only make an offering to him of our means, but give ourselves to him in willing service. To each of us, from the oldest to the youngest, is granted the privilege of becoming workers together with God. Christ is soon to come in the clouds of heaven to reward every one according to his works. To whom it will then be said, Ye have done what ye could. And I want to make a comment here about this, um, but give ourselves to him in willing service. There are so many today that say, oh, that means I need to start a ministry. And their real thought is, the real intent of the heart is, that way all of you can support me while I sit home and do nothing saying that I'm working for Jesus. But we need to give ourselves in willing service and do as Paul did. He took care of his own needs. He worked for Christ, but he also worked as a tent maker. Jesus spent the first 30 years of his life taking care of that, working at the carpenter trade. And we could go through numerous others. In fact, the majority of individuals in the Bible, we can see that they had a trade. What about Joseph? Powerful man. Powerful testimony. And while he gave willing service to Christ, he had a job he had to do. And that is the way we need to be. So let us not forget, and I, as I read this reference here, the key of it, let us upon the... The coming Christmas and New Year's not only make an offering to him of our means, but I think this is the most important part next. But give ourselves to him in willing service. Willing service. Youth instructor. September 9. Youth instructor. September 9, 1897. Um, yeah, there we go. Okay, Youth Instructor, September 9, 1897. Starting in the middle of the first paragraph. By yielding to temptation, they have weakened their power to obey. Their hearts are deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. They are dead in trespasses and sins, and in their own strength they can no, do no good. In order to serve God acceptably, we must be born again. Our natural dispositions, which are in opposition to the Spirit of God, must be put away. We must be made new men and women in Christ Jesus our old, unrenewed lives must give place to a new life, a new life full of love, of trust, of willing obedience. Think you that such a change is not necessary for entrance into the kingdom of God? Listen to the words of the majesty of heaven. Ye must be born again, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Unless the change takes place, we cannot serve God aright. Our work will be defective. Earthly plans will be brought in. Strange fire, dishonoring to God, will be offered. Our lives will be unholy 
and unhappy, full of unrest and trouble. Do not let self hinder you from hearing the call. Ye must be born again. Fear not to make a full surrender of yourselves to Christ. Place yourself without reserve under his control. Learn what it means to cease from sin, what it means to have a new heart, to bear the divine similitude. As you behold Christ, self will sink into insignificance, and you will be changed into his image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. And I want now to, in Youth Instructor, to go to July 28, 1892. July 28, 1892. And this is our instructions for the new year. This is our instructions for the new year. And if you hear nothing else, as we finish up our study here, this is our instructions for the new year. So not only are we to do all these other things where we have chosen to walk closer to our Savior, where we have repented of our sin, we need this step here. July 28, 1892. In searching the Word of God, do not be content with superficial work. Many of the gems of truth lie deep, and one who looks only on the surface will not discover them. You must dig deep in the mine of truth if you would find its richest treasures. Before I go on with this, we need to dig deep. Today, the majority are surface readers, surface Christians, surface studiers. Oh yes, I read my Bible every day. But do you study your Bible every day? Do you go from verse to verse? Do you search it for the truths that are held there? Or is it a superficial work? Oh yeah, I spent time with God today, so therefore I'm in good standing. We can pat our own backs, but it doesn't work that way. The majority are on this road. But we need to dig deep. We need to search and to study, to be Bereans, so that we can understand and have a clear understanding of the Word of God. There's deep truths that are yet to be discovered, and those truths are the means of our salvation. So going back to our quote, I'm going to reread the, well, actually, I didn't read that much, so I'm just going to read it all again. In searching the Word of God, do not be content with superficial work. Many of the gems of truth lie deep, and one who looks only on the surface will not discover them. You must dig deep in the mine of truth if you would find its richest treasures. Comparing scripture with scripture, you may find the true meaning of the text. But if you do not make the sacred teachings of God's word the rule and guide of your life, the truth will be nothing to you. Its efficiency, its efficiency, the efficiency of truth is discovered only when it is carried out in practical life. 
If any part of God's word condemns any habit you have cherished, any feeling you have indulged, any spirit you have manifested, turn not from the word of God, but turn away from the evil of your doings. Let Jesus cleanse and sanctify your heart. Confess your faults and forsake them wholly and determinedly, believing the promise of God and showing your faith by your works. So there's a bit of counsel for us as we will begin a new year. So as the holiday seasons pass by, let us not ignore them in the aspect of the true meaning. The wise men brought gifts to Christ. Ought we not to do the same? They came to worship. Are we not to do the same? All of Israel was right there around where this greatest event in earth's history happened. And they missed it. Because they weren't deep diggers of truth. And yet, three men from another country, three men from another country, figured it out. And shepherds in the field were privileged to learn of this event by the angels telling them why simply because those shepherds were wondering about the event. That was the best thing the angels could find to share the message to. Was a few shepherds. And the shepherds didn't go, oh, yeah, well, that's really good. No. They made haste to see the king. Will you make haste to see the king? Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we come to you desiring to see the king, desiring that the superficial work be no longer in our lives, but that we may use those spare moments to dig deep into your word, to not rely on past or even present, but to look to the future and to strive to understand from Scripture the events that are transpiring about us. For I believe soon and very soon all shall see the King. Will we be ready? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.